Welcome to Makers on Tap, the podcast where makerspace directors drink and talk about making stuff. This week, I've got with me... Aaron. And Christian. And Brandon. And Brandon, where are you from? Why We're are you Houston, here? Houston, Texas, man. But, but why are you on the show? What do you do? Who well, let you I... in here? I I hang out really, man, and play with toys. Really awesome toys. And plus, Joe, you told me you really needed somebody awesome to be on the podcast. So, you know, I had to jump in and help my buddy out, man. I did say that. So Brandon runs an absolutely rad company called Hobby Fab. And uh actually you know what we skipped a part before we dive into what hobby fab is man would you follow what is it (laughs) why do we even put these outlines together in the first place follow the script feel better (laughs) all right chris what are you drinking tonight oh i am uh i'm actually drinking because we had a awesome friendsgiving last night um and somebody left some dr mcgillicuddy's um cherry whiskey So I am Ooh. mixing that tonight, so I'm loving it. <laughs> and Aaron? I actually have uh, some Kirkland brand bourbon. Um, I brought it to Friendsgiving last night, and I was super conflicted as to what to bring because I had no idea who was going to be there because I really wanted to get their like $50 brandy or like the cognac, uh. but I didn't want to show up and be the, the douche with like super expensive liquor. Not knowing who's going to be there. Yeah. So I settled on the Kirkland bourbon. Nice. Uh, Brandon, what are you drinking? Man, I've already had to kill it for the night. I'd finished my six pack of uh, Hopadillo <laughs> earlier, which is a local Texas Ooh. brewery. Uh, in fact, it's probably made its way up to you guys by now. It was uh, a couple of guys that just sat around, enjoyed drinking, uh, started making beer. And got bought out by Anheuser Busch recently. The product hasn't changed. The packaging's went kind of eco friendly, but besides that, I still really enjoy the product. So yeah, I I finished off about six p.m. and my wife was like, "Hey, don't you have something to do later tonight?" I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll lay the seventh one down. <laughs> oh man! Nice. And tonight, Brandon is going to be the reason we record this podcast twice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, tonight I'm drinking uh, Voodoo Ranger from New Belgium. Uh, it's their Imperial IPA, and it's one of my favorites. So let's get back on to where I was going. Hobby Fab is an awesome DIY CNC company, uh, but tell us a little bit about Hobby Fab and what you do and like Absolutely, all that. Absolutely, man. So. Basically, the whole thing is just open source hardware, CNC parts, uh, whether it be lasers, 3D printers. We've gotten off into some real weird, goofy stuff before as well. But basics of it right now is still just about mainly 3D printers, CNC routers. Uh, We've pretty much dropped all the other lines of everything else. I mean, we even got into playing with like DIY quadcopters for a while. Uh, that just turned into a horrible market real fast. Um, yeah, <laughs> everybody got bored with. Them I bought so a lot of quick. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a lot of parts from you though. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. You know, man. no, they were a blast. It just, it really, it's the market just loved them, absorbed them. Everybody sold parts to them, and then everybody was like, "What is a quadcopter? I don't know. That's that crap up on my shelf." Yep. All right. <laughs> And that's where all my quadcopters are. Yeah, I'm looking at like five of them sitting up there. I was like, hey. <laughs> but no, just so, basically my um, open source hardware uh, parts, really just parts to build nice. machines to help people turn their concept into reality. Well, all right. and actually that's like how you and I got kind of close there for a little while is you helped me turn one of my concepts into reality. You remember that? I do. Always a pleasure. Absolutely. And I love working with guys like you, man. That is just like, there's so many cool people out there that just have these ideas. And it's just, uh, it's truly awesome to get, get into uh, get into you guys' heads. And especially people that can CAD real well and draft and be able to transfer ideas through uh, any kind of media whatsoever, man. Those are the funnest builds <laughs> to be part of. 
Yeah. So uh, three years ago, um, you helped me do a uh, 3D printer build class. Mm -hmm. And uh, pretty much I built this. I designed a Crusa i3 like printer based off of vslot and i tried to buy as many parts as i could through brandon's site and then uh for the class he helped us put together kits where it was like a one kit or yeah like a (laughs) one click order for everybody who was buying the kit for the class and uh it turned out really awesome yeah Um, you guys did great too man i mean you had a lot of people really interested in that build and i think you really uh opened a lot of people's eyes it was pretty awesome to be uh to to be part of that yeah it's still one of my favorite printers i still print with it all the time so you still print (laughs) (laughs) yeah i do still print it's awesome when do you find the time right i i don't you know i don't sleep (laughs) ever so like um Hobby Fab, and then you were another company before. We were. Hobby so, Fab is the rebranded SMW 3D. Uh, I get asked all the time, man, what happened to those SMW 3D people? Uh, phone number goes to you guys, and I'm like, no, it's still me, man. Um, <laughs> it was really about, uh, you know, I used the symbol of open source hardware uh, for the company logo of SMW 3D. And it would happen okay. about once a week. Somebody would be like, hey, you're open builds, right? And I'm like, no, <laughs> oh. no, no, it's, it's, it's not really their logo. But, you know, yeah, okay, cool. Um, here's all their parts, though. Um, <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> but no, and, and two, um, and I might step on a toe or two out here, but to use that logo and sell closed source products, didn't work for me and so we started looking at the rebranding really about the same time we're messing with quadcopter stuff because a lot of that is not open hardware uh yeah and then you get into stuff with lasers a lot of that is not open hardware you get into different cnc controllers Uh, a lot of that's not open hardware so it just didn't make sense to keep an open hardware logo uh and have some closed source parts Hmm. yeah that makes sense that's respectable so so why did SMW 3D start? Like how how did that go? Because you did you had a day job while you were running SMW 3D, right? I did. So how I did? Um, how 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 did you get going in all that? So actually, I was playing around with printers. I'm I was a lot like a number of other people. I saw you know this riprap video. There was this old dude, and he was like college professor and he was talking about the sharing ideas and building a printer that could build other people and uh, build other people a printer and this whole rip rap thing and man i got so enthralled with it uh, and that's about the time brooks was coming online and uh this is before sanjay and those guys came on and i started trying to piece a printer together out of just like screws nuts and bolts you know there were no 3d printed parts anywhere uh, even yep. to find a stepper motor back then was kind of hard. Uh, yeah. You could only get a J head, uh, something of that sorts at least. Um, but then I stepped away from it and started traveling for a while. And then when I came back down here to Houston uh, and had a nice cushy desk job, uh, I just like fell back in love with 3D printing all over again. And so I came home one day and I told the wife, I was like, I'm just going to do this 3d printing business she's like whatever uh (laughs) so i ordered up you know like a a whole bunch of uh e3d hot ends and just dove full back in you know head first and uh we went yeah we went from having like 12 products and then within 12 months we had 330 some odd different products um and i did that for a long time you know i kept i kept my day job and i'd have people that would work for the business and the wife would work for the business and uh we were doing really well uh you know especially when we expanded into the cnc router space uh that was just so awesome and i i I still to this day i love cnc routers um but you know it, it just kept cruising along and doing really well and so 
I've just continued to keep doing it. Hmm. Nice. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming Adrian Boyer was the guy yeah, who got you. Yeah. I, super in. Som- yeah. Sometimes I mention that name though, and everybody, and I'll get people be like, "Who's that?" I'm like, yeah. "Well, go back to YouTube in the '80s." No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's that's a really interesting thing because like two years ago when you went to Murph, if you would have said Adrian Breuer, everyone was like, "Oh yeah, he's yeah. my best friend. I'm, <laughs> I know that guy." And we just like, had coffee. <laughs> yeah, and then last year you go to Murph and everyone's like, "If I, who yeah. did Joel Telling start three D printing? Like yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's a no, it's a very man. different landscape." He's kind of—he was just kind of so, like the godfather to me, you know. Of it, it's—he definitely wasn't the first by any means, but he really, to in my opinion, brought it to where it is right now in our community. Certainly not on the commercial level, but he brought it yeah. to our level. You know, he made it—he yes. made it achievable. Yeah, yeah, and I remember because I built my first printer in that same era that you built it in, where it was like. You know, you were buying sketchy kits <laughs> off of eBay that you weren't sure if they were going to work. But yeah. You paid a lot of money, so you hoped. Yeah. Like, oh, man. I got that a, first a, print, though, dude. I mean, I don't know if you remember that, <laughs> but that first print, you're just like, I made a cube. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a My, golden god. <laughs> <laughs> My my first print was more like, why isn't this sticking to anything? <laughs> I think I, I, seriously, I I built my first printer and then put it away for almost a year because yeah. I was so frustrated with it. Wow. I had already built a CNC router at the time, so I knew I could build a machine. Mm-hmm. And I built that CNC. I built like four revisions of this router, and like it worked. So I knew I could build a machine. And I was just like, 3D printing is crap. <laughs> and and then um, I saw a good print, and I was like, oh, I can do this, <laughs> you know. And, and then I did it, and like, and then you know, yeah, eight years later or something, 3D printing and makerspace crap is my life, and yeah. like that's what we do now. So, no, it's funny. All right. Like we we all remember those like old school printing stories like you guys were like essential to mine and i've talked about it a couple times but i was building mine over the course of a year and i swear i printed a shark clip probably 20 times before it actually freaking worked (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) there's so much fun man it was that you know that first print is just like wow Mm mm-hmm it's yeah, amazing. Aaron's over there. He can't relate because he bought a good printer for his first printer. He's like, <laughs> "Oh, hey now, it just worked." <laughs> hey now. <laughs> so for one thing, that's my second printer. Um, oh. I got the Prusa i3 Mark II. Nice. But Joe, you remember I brought in my first printer that one time at the space that had like an old version one J head. Oh, it was nice. one of those janky Chinese kits. Um, oh, Jamie yeah. bought it, so my wife, fiance at the time, bought it for me, and it was like. Six seven hundred bucks for wow. from some random Chinese company, and because I had done my research at the time, and um, this was like one of the better of the mm-hmm. sellers out there, and yeah. it comes in and like you know rods are warped and yeah the prints are all janked up and every <laughs> every part needs to be post processed to actually get things to fit. <laughs> right. I, and this I, was like three or four years old. Chinese kits, not the Chinese kits that we have now. Right, yeah. Yeah, this is at oh, least five years ago now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't we just have yeah, somebody they... come in who was like dropping off another printer and it was just like a disaster? Like it looked scary how it was even like tied together. <laughs> that was the I4 mm. that I'm I'm finishing for one of the guys from the class. That's right. <laughs> Let's be clear. My design didn't have it all sketched out. Okay. (laughs) Okay. It's just, it's been two years of, of multiple people working on it and it's going to be beautiful when it leaves my house. It's just, it's it's just the dirty end users (laughs) messing it all up. Don't worry, Joe, that'll buff out. (laughs) No, it's just, it's people trying their, their best. And, uh, you know, 
and learning. Like, yeah. I, I, I think it's awesome that he got it as far as he got it. And you know, now I'm just going to take it the rest of the way for him because he's getting ready to move. So, um, but like, he's put a lot of effort into it and I give him props for that because a lot of people would have just been like, nah, I'm going to set it on fire now. Like, <laughs> you know, or going to set it in the corner for a year like I did with that one part. <laughs> All right, so uh, we know why it started. So, who are you, Brandon? What's what's your what makes you tick? Like when when you're not working on stuff, what what's constantly in the back of your head making you go back out to the garage? Oh man, it would be the kids for sure. But Joe, I'm always <laughs> working on something, brother. I'm always working on something. Uh, idle hands are what makes a man age, man. You got to right, keep right. you got to keep your hands I, busy. You got to keep your mind busy. Uh, I love working on stuff. Now what I did do is turn my hobby into my living. So when I ask you're still printing, <laughs> I can't tell you the last time I turned on a printer, man. <laughs> right. I've got a brand new sheet metal bent one that I just made that's laying on my desk right here and I'm like I don't know. Nah, no. Nah. <laughs> um, but no, so, man. It's it's it's. Who am I? Who am I? Gosh. Um. Well, I'm a dad, man. A uh, 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 husband. Uh, graduated with a BSME. I'm a project manager, certified project manager by uh, by uh, profession. When I am working at a job. Um. <laughs> Besides that, you're man, working I at just, a job. You're well, running your own business, well, which is like twelve times more work than working at a desk job. Yeah, but isn't it? I, I get what you mean. Yeah, when you're working for the man. You're well, a project manager, and that would be, you know, it has its benefits for sure. But, um, but no, that's that's really, man. I mean, it's just about about making and hanging out with my boys. That's really about all the, all there is to me, man. Uh, the wife would say I snore a lot, um, but that'd probably be her most positive comment about me, really. <laughs> I, Joe, I've you, met your you, wife. Yeah, she you've met that. her. She's that's my firecracker. <laughs> but you know, like I always say, that the first tool in being able to build your own CNC machine or 3D printer is having a deeply understanding and supportive spouse. Mm -hmm. and, Absolutely. And deep and pockets help as well. If you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't hurt. Yeah, <laughs> but no, I agree with you, man. I mean, I I remember that. Uh, heck, that first one I was building, her and I weren't together. But when I came back in, the first one I built uh, was an I three, um, and I went and had like the Frank uh, water jet cut, oh, nice. and you know, I was using Imperial screws that I bought at Home Depot, and I actually, gross. I know. I actually <laughs> worked at uh, I worked at Hewlett Packard at the time, and so they had a big, nice commercial printer, and I was like, "Hey, man, well, how that all got started is the the manager over there was like, I want you. Here's your project. I want you to build a metal 3D printer." All right, so everybody, oh God. everybody catch on here real quick. I was working at <laughs> HP, and they want me to build a metal 3D printer. Have you guys seen what HP just recently released and has been throwing in your face everywhere? I should have stayed with HP. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so uh, I went up to the guys, and I was like, well, i got to understand, you know, plastic 3D printing first. And they're like, all right, well, here's a budget. Do whatever. I was like, hey, wait, we got commercial 3D printers here. Yeah. So I ran up to the guy and I was like, hey, man, here's some files. Print me these files. He's like, what are these for? I was like, oh, it's this, it's this open source 3D printer thing. He's like, oh, those are junk. And I was like, yeah, you operate a $30,000. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, op you operate a $30,000 machine that you just press a, press a button on. I'm sure you think that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I remember building it on our on our dining room table when we were engaged, man. And she's just like, "What is that contraption?" <laughs> <laughs> My so, wife yeah, said something similar. So. Yeah, she's uh, she's been she's been very supportive. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when I built my first CNC machine. It was a, a little guy that fit on my desk, and uh, my wife comes down as it's 
doing its first moves. And this was like back in the old days with unipolar stepper drivers Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, running quarter stepping was like huge for micro steps. (laughs) So it was loud. And, uh, she's like, what is that noise? And I was like, I told you I was building a CNC machine. And she's like, I just didn't believe you. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. And now when I say I'm going to build something, she's just like, not again. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever. Say it ain't so. (laughs) Just let me park my car in the garage once this year. (laughs) To which I say no. No. (laughs) You're... Anyway. (laughs) So, um... I guess you kind of answered this question. I'm just going in the in the the list that I have. What do you actually like to make, like beyond your products and and all of that? Like, oh, I sent you a picture of my latest project this morning. Uh, I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah, did. yeah. It's um. God, I really don't have anything else I like to make. Um, but I I've now move my focus back into my automobiles like much to my wife's dismay i don't sell any automobiles or guns or tools uh right. i'll sell a kid but i won't sell any <laughs> of those um and a long time ago i had this old 7.3 turbo diesel truck and i sold it and for some reason i've always missed that one and so I went and found yeah. another one just the other day and like song and a dance. And the guy was like, oh, it's not running. It's a repo from a bank and it's probably really not worth anything. And I was like, yeah, you're absolutely right. What a piece of shit. I'll haul it off for you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got it home within three hours it, go, 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 and cranked up, man. I'm, I just absolutely, I'm thrilled with that thing. And then like you saw this morning, I went and got like, tires on the tires for it that are bigger than the truck itself i don't even know what i'm gonna do with those but you know that's what i'm enjoying right now man my flavor changes a little bit yeah nice i i think that's totally legit like my what i make and what i work on changes constantly Mm -hmm. about every three years i dive back into cars that's awesome and then i regret it yeah (laughs) (laughs) because they're just frustration money pits yeah Yep. But boy, they're fun while they're fun. Yes, they are. <laughs> oh, sure. I've got a nice money pit I'm trying to get rid of now. Oh. You're not selling the Miata again, are you? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm trying to get rid of the BMW. Good. I don't want that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. what, uh, what model is that one? It's a 2001 um, 330Ci. So the E46 okay. Okay. model. Not horrible then. Oh, is it yeah, that it's, it's small not... one that I drove that I like felt like I was a clown in? No, that's the Miata. Oh, okay. okay. That's I'm keeping right. that because <laughs> I do want to make it electric at some point. Oh, that would yeah. be, oh, that'd be great cool. base yeah. for electric, man. Yeah. I know. Awesome. That's why I'm yeah. keeping it. <laughs> you probably would need but two 800 watts on the rear wheels, man. And that's probably <laughs> to drive that. <laughs> Man. I've seen some great videos of electric Miatas, and they're just insane. What are they? What are they? What are, what normal wattage do they throw at them? Honestly, I have no idea. Okay, I, I know nothing about electric vehicles, oh, so it'd be like what I learned on <laughs> <laughs> my senior design project uh, was I made an electric unicycle. I don't know if you guys have ever <laughs> saw it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, it was uh, really cool, man. I don't know if you guys ever saw it, but there was a product that came out. In fact, I think it was a Kickstarter. Um, but basically, it was an electric unicycle. You'd get on it, and you lean forward, and it would scoot you forward. you lean back, and it'd slow down or go backwards. So we like put into all this design work and fully designed it and set up the... I, I grabbed an Ardrino and did a... Uh, did a gyroscope and a uh, mag on it and we built this thing and we're like oh it's so awesome 
None of us could ride the son of a bitch. I mean, <laughs> all of us were always so hammered when we were working on it. it just like, I mean, at one point we even stole a grocery cart just to prove that we could sit on top of it and it would work. It was awesome. But yeah, none of us. You would had get any along problems. with my friend Sam, <laughs> who I was telling unicycle stories about last night. Is that right? This guy. He he's a uh, scientist for NASA, well, right. an engineer for NASA. And he writes GPS guidance software. He's right. also been kicked out of a bar for riding unicycle <laughs> through the bar, <laughs> and got a hernia for carrying oh, two packs of Natty Light to a frat party on it. Natty Light is you... this a Texas guy too? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, he's from here. <laughs> Yeah, you it know, sounds that's... like my kind of guy. I don't drink that beer, but I mean, it's it's just a natural thing. You're like born in Texas. You get a natty light as soon as you pop out in a big truck. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> Give you a natty light, a four wheel drive, and a, and yeah. a rifle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, oh man. Oh, man. I, I love how off topic these conversations get. <laughs> All right, I'm going to dive back into your business a tiny, tiny bit. Yeah, absolutely. So you you sell, your main thing right now is your CNC router kits, right? It is, it is. Um, so I've, you, I've really wanted to expand on that and, and offer different models, man. But, um, you know, it's really amazing when you do this, how small the marketplace is. Uh, yeah. A guy will get on line and see a cnc router somewhere or somebody will on a social media site say i made this on the cnc router and uh, an interest begins to be peaked and then he starts researching well if you ever really really research cnc routers and you know that you're going to buy one uh but you don't have twenty thousand dollars you're going to end up building one and so in my opinion and in Customers will call me, and I'm very forward about this. If you can't afford my kit, go get a Bob CNC. If my kit doesn't suffice, go to a CNC router parts kit. I don't think there's anything mm. else in the marketplace other than those three. Myself, Bob's, and CNC router parts. I'm going to step on some toes there, and somebody will be like, oh, that guy's a freaking <laughs> idiot. Oh, yeah, no, there's these other guys. Um, but I've played with everybody's stuff. And so I think... You go and you shop by price point. Uh, one of the hugest things about the CNC router is customer support. Uh, that's like mm -hmm. ace yeah. number one, super huge. It's like a 3D printer. You know, it's, it's you don't, well, other than that Prusa that, that Homeboy got and opened up the box and plugged in, it worked. Uh, <laughs> they don't <laughs> felt great. Yeah, they don't typically do that, you know, especially a CNC router. Um, and yeah. so it's real big about C uh, support. And I've I've just watched this that you know that Bob's is a wood one, uh, but gosh, his price point is really low. Uh, mm. And I've seen a lot of quality products come off of them. Um, I told I've never you seen these before. How? Do is that they, right? Well, no, he's even on Amazon, man. Um, I told you I'm the worst at shameless promotion. I'm like on, on podcast <laughs> talking about it's another person's company. Um, <laughs> but he's really, really good at support. Um, you know, he's a sub $1,000 machine. I yeah. fit in between the $1,000 to $3,000 range. If you need more than my machines can then I suggest a CNC router parts because I love his rack and pinion design. Uh, and and yeah. all three it's companies... It's a good machine. And all three companies mm -hmm. have just exceptional customer service. Um, I, at one time, handed off my customer service to uh, people that worked for me. And I quickly ended it because I was never happy with the way they responded to my clients. It's... It, I... <laughs> Now, I have told some people to, to piss off. <laughs> I, won't, I won't lie, because you, you, get, you get three people that are going to, you know, call you with an issue. It's, it's the first guy is like, hey, man, I think something's up here. 
The second guy is a PhD. He knows everything. You can't tell him anything. And the other guy is like, you suck. It doesn't matter what you say. You suck. You just you suck. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm going to send you a brand new machine. It's too bad you still suck. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, customer service is, is, a, is a huge one in the CNC routers. And I think that's, that's where I've seen, you know, there was a guy up in Canada that was doing pretty good for a minute too, but I think he's gotten out of the game. Um, but those three companies, man, I've seen them excellent service. Who was that last one? Uh, CNC router parts. Okay. You talk. Oh, the guy up in Canada. I don't. I can't remember what his what his store name was. I think he just got tired of it, man, because somebody emailed me about six months ago, and they're like, "Hey, will you make these plates for me?" And I opened up the file, and I was like, "I know whose plates that are, and I can't do that, man. That's somebody else's product, you know." He's like, he told me to go piss off and here's the files, make it myself. I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I think he got out of it. But um but yeah, so CNC routers, man, that's just that's I just love them. You know, I really do. I I, I love the ability to work in multi material plastic, mm -hmm. wood, and metal. Um and I love that you're not stuck with just 2D shapes anymore. You know, if you're if you're a designer, the sky's the limit on what you can do. Um, and I like the I like the people that use them too a lot. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I I love my routers. I still love my lasers though. Like, yeah, lasers are so clean, and they're and they uh, you don't have to hold your work down. <laughs> but That's true. Routers are where I started. They'll always be where my heart is. Yeah. So. No, I love I love the lasers too, man. I just, uh, you know, I stayed away from them for so long. I just, as far as the commercial aspect goes, there's always the safety aspect, you know. Yes. You're going to put your eye out with that. Um, <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> At least your retina. Right, right. <laughs> um but you know, there's always been a uh, there's always been a request for them, and so we've now integrated them into both of our products. Uh, oh, and, of, wow. and of course, you know, Joe, that I bought the big commercial 150 watt CO2, uh, which was a learning curve. I completely caught that thing on fire and like burned most <laughs> of it down within a month of owning it. Uh, I feel like that's literally. a rites of passage. <laughs> it almost yeah. is, man. <laughs> and it's a five mirror system. And so it, when I, when it got delivered, I set it all up and level it and everything. And I spent like three <laughs> days straight just getting the mirrors aligned and then was yep. cutting a piece of acrylic. And here's a valuable lesson for you listeners out there that love lasers. Take the paper off the acrylic. I don't care what you read on the internet. Take the freaking paper off the acrylic. I turned around, <laughs> man. My son asked me about a homework question or something, and I looked at his question, and he said, hey, Dad. And I turned around, and acrylic is flammable. How about you? <laughs> and the lid on the laser is acrylic. So one fire started another fire, <laughs> and I get the, I get the freaking, I get the freaking uh, extinguisher out and spray it all down, and then I'm sitting there looking at it, all the fires out, and I just covered every mirror. With this, you know, fire extinguisher stuff that's down in the head now, and the like, the acrylic's oh, still God. sizzling and smoking. Yeah, and it was <laughs> awesome. So another, you know, like two weeks, and I even think I posted something on G Plus. I'm like, that's it. I'm done with lasers. Uh, I'm hauling this one off to the dump. I'm gonna shoot it. Uh, it was just a really, really bad deal. But now, man, now I love that thing. What I, what I am hesitant about lasers though is the fact you're always stuck in 2d always yeah. there's nothing you can do about that you're stuck in 2d there's no engraving with one i've tried every material like at a set depth you can engrave anything yeah <clears throat> but if you want to yeah sorry groove something one millimeter deep repeatable it's just not going to happen. You know, it can be 80 degrees one day here and 99 the next. And that one, that one millimeter depth is, is varying each day. <laughs> yeah, that's huge. So I read so, on Reddit that uh, acrylic is a petroleum based product and that's why it's super flammable. I don't doubt it. I, I don't cut it yeah. anymore. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, I, do a... Do a, I do do a little bit of acrylic, man. But for the most part, I'll route acrylic. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna do anything with it, I'm gonna route it. No, yeah, I like enough. laser cutting acrylic, but then your whole shop smells like a nail Ugh. salon. Yeah, and uh, you know that's annoying. So. I mean, at least you could get a manicure out of it if you're gonna get that smell. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> oh man. Um. So with your CNC routers, uh, what's the difference between your kits? So you've got the R7. That's correct. The R7 was um, that one, man. Like I, I sent an email to Mark over at Open Build, and I was like, "Look, I need this other profile that you don't make, and eighty twenty doesn't make it, and I need like this C type thing where I can put a drive in the middle of it and forty by eighty. And man, like six months later, it popped out. Um, I already had the design put together, but with channel uh steel channel and okay when he came out with that i already had the design done i just replaced the parts so the r7 was actually the very first c beam machine ever produced uh or designed and so that one i i really made that one because i needed something that would cut aluminum uh yep. it, that one came out of a personal need for me um and so it's been it's been a huge seller man we've got those all over the world uh, literally in every branch of military that you think of, uh, people don't often realize exactly how widespread that thing is. But again, I'm, I'm horrible at being the shameless promoter. Uh, and so it, it's, it's been a great machine, but it varies from the ox and most other kits, uh, in the fact that it's got an 800 watt water cooled spindle on it. It's full acne drive. Um, and we, that's why I push it. Yeah, I love it. Man. I, I I'm, really do. I'm a firm believer that anything with a cutting head shouldn't be driven by belts. No, well, <laughs> and see, I I I differ with you. Um, to to roll right into the next product is the ox, and see, I get that all the time. I'm like, you know, I'll get a guy that calls me and says, "Man, I love the R7, but you know, I need a bigger footprint." I'm like, "Well, sorry." We use these little bitty eight millimeter diameter acmes, and if you go over one thousand, it's going to whip all over the place. Like you can actually, yeah. I've, I've experimented with a fifteen hundred before, and it like whips like a freight train through the middle of that channel. Um, mm. And so I was like, you know, you got to go with the ox, and the guy will be like, ah, I don't want that belt thing. What a lot of people don't realize is that belt is uh, previously was patented by Gates. And it mm -hmm. is a fiberglass reinforced belt. Uh, I still have an ox here that I run the living crud out of, uh, probably more than I should have. Um, but those belts will do an initial stretch as soon as you fire them up. About 10 hours is when I typically pe tell people to readjust. But once that initial stretch comes out of them, man, they don't move anymore. Uh, not with my, des my ox design, at least, because we put the wheels really, really close to the belt pulley. Uh, so okay. there's not a lot of slack in the drive, but that's the main difference between the ox and the R7. R7 being acne driven, ox being belt driven. Uh, both though are full G code controllable spindles, uh, where I suck the spindle in as close to the Z axis as possible to get rid of the moments that everybody complains about. Uh, moment arm, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah. And they're both um, both made like. Pretty much everything's made here, man. You know, I, I make the plates here. We make the control boxes here. Uh, we order some parts from Open Builds, which is a U.S. supplier. Um, I don't get the spindle motors or the stepper motors here locally. I just, I can't find them. Yeah, they just no. still even to this they day. They aren't here. They're not. Not, <laughs> not in anything that anybody would pay for, at least. But no, I mean, well, both... even the the super high end steppers, they still come from China. Yeah, yeah. Or at least there Taiwan. Was, there was um, seems like at one of those MRRFs, there was a moon, something moon stepper. Yeah, moons. Come. Yeah, um, moons. They're I, uh, they're still in China. That's what I was they, thinking. Uh, I've been meaning to yeah, research but... that, and I just hadn't. Honestly, moons. Um, I I worked with them quite a bit when I was at Lulzbot, and. Uh, they make 
most of the motors in the world. Really? Um, wow. So like Automation Drex motors, they're mm-hmm. all moons. Automation Technologies motors, they're all moons. Oh, they um, like uh i i was talking to the rep and we were just like going through different companies and he's like yeah i make those and we make those and we make those and um That's i awesome. i quickly realized the difference between the motors is just the specs that you see in the catalog Pretty not much. necessarily the manufacturing quality because they're all the same plant yeah yeah they they yeah I use uh, Motex, which I've actually been to their plant. Uh, we went over to China a few years back and got to meet them. And I've always just, there's probably better prices on steppers out there, but I've, I've grown to know that entire group and mm-hmm. just really like their products. And it's just, you know, it's, it's rough though. Um, I don't know how much you guys have got into it. I don't know if anybody else has mentioned it, but uh, tariffs are freaking killing me, man, uh, and indirectly killing you guys, uh, you know, yeah. customers that yeah. order from. I uh, I saw a post this guy the other day, you know, he said, well, how is how are the tariffs going to hurt our, you know, 3D printers and stuff? And uh, one guy was like, oh, they won't just order off, off Amazon. Like, oh, <laughs> cool man thanks <laughs> hey man love, love you i much. hear trade wars are easy <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, man yeah. i i bought a commercial laser cutter uh a month and a half ago and you know he he's he was straight up like hey i've got this 25 percent tariff on this laser cutter i'll split it with you wow but, uh I uh, I'm not eating the entire tariff, right. and uh, you know we had to pay an extra eight hundred dollars on the laser. Wow! Yeah. So yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Stuff, it's fun. Man. It's crazy <laughs> stuff. That's yeah. uh, it's it's definitely impacted all of my prices. You know, and it's it's yeah. just no I, I way believe to, it. No way to get around it. You know, there's just absolutely no way to get around it. You just gotta you gotta deal with it. Um, but that's been rough, man. That's really, that's really been part of the business here lately that I just have not enjoyed whatsoever. And it's hurt. It's hurt me, but not only me, but other companies you're aware of, you know, I, I was talking to Brooks about that right before he got done. You know, I was like, so how's it hurt you? He said, I'll show you here soon. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, wow. (laughs) I didn't really know what he meant at the time. And then like literally like two weeks later. Yeah. Mm. What was crazy about that was I was just hanging out with him at Earth, you know, a month and a half before that. This is Brooke from PrinterBot. Mm-hmm. And he was telling me about all the stuff that he had coming up that he was getting ready to release. And he was super mm-hmm. excited. But I could also tell, like, in the background that he, like, wasn't entirely sure. Yeah. And yeah. that's that's just always kind of how been, Brooke's been when I've talked to him. So I was like, well, that's whatever. It's, that's it's Brooke. And then, uh, you know they shut down but he's doing cool stuff now and i'm excited to see what he comes out with in the the coming months (laughs) me too he won't be he won't be the only one that'll have to restructure yeah you'll you'll i I want to jab him to be on this (laughs) that'd be a good idea we'll see it would be a good idea man he's awesome it would be really fun it would be he's so fun to talk to he really is he's a character uh so brandon i have a question yes sir uh, look on your site. You have a section for 3D printer kits that says "coming soon." Yeah. What I kind of know. what kind of designs? <laughs> <are you? laughs> so well, you said you had that folded sheet metal one sitting on your I, desk. I do, brother. Run down to the bottom of the page and hit the blog, and you'll be able to flip like I don't know two or three down, and you'll see uh, NPD or new product development too. That's something I've been mm-hmm. working on for a little bit. Um, my thought was that with what it all is going on in the market and everything, if I could take and pretty much manufacture a complete machine only made in the U.S., that there would be some chance uh, to have some market share for it. Um but what I'm really seeing, man, is a disconnect with 3D printing that I've never seen before. I, I really can't explain it and don't love it. Uh, 
but I am hesitant to go ahead and release that product. And so I put that on the site and then I just like every few days I'll look at that page and I'm like, mm, should I just take that page completely down? <laughs> then I'll wake up the next day and I'm like, nope, just release the printer and let's go. Yeah. But you know, it takes money to put one of those together and get it out, you know? And so if I see yeah. them build up like 10 of them and not one sales, you know, I'm like, well, yeah, crap. And yep. it's nothing special. You know, it's, 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 it's just a workhorse is all it is. You know, it's not a bunch of 3D printed parts. It is absolutely no plastic whatsoever on it. Um, and other than the stepper motors, everything is U.S. I mean, it even runs a Panacat controller, uh, which is a oh, U.S. Nice. controller. Um, it, the entire point was to be as U.S. as absolute possible. And, and without the stepper motors, it would be. Um, but again, man, it's such a weird market right now. Uh, I haven't, I haven't seen. Actually, I've seen a, a huge decrease in 3D printer part sales. Um, and in fact, if you guys are all hooked into the company's emails that are related to 3D printing, you probably noticed an increase in sales here lately from various mm -hmm. fillet manufacturers, and probably a few more emails than you're used to seeing. Um, I think there's a big downturn in that market and I, I, I don't think I can blame it on tariffs. Um, it's just that I don't see the interest that there used to be in it all of a sudden. And I'm not really sure what the fold over was on that. Do you think that's more of something like where it's more people are looking at less build it yourself DIY and they're more looking towards the ease of use buying like a pre-made something and going with that? Or do you think it's just pure interest is dropping off? I, I would, I think that's a great question, man. And I would like to believe that it's people more looking for a manufactured printer, but that doesn't fit well with printer bot. <laughs> you know what I mean? He, that was his, right. That's, no, uh, that's hell, fair. heck we, we own a couple of them here. You know, they were, they were open up the box and use and a lot like Perusa's kit, you know, uh, Joe's kit. It's, it's an open up the box and use thing, man. They're awesome. Mm -hmm. They just work. Um, but I, yeah, I, I, I really, I, I think it's just a, a loss of interest that I can't really explain. I'd love to hear other people's opinions on that. You know, I don't know, like participating in the social media of 3d printing, um, I feel like the three hundred dollar eBay, Amazon, China kits have killed the community that we worked so hard for so many years to build. I agree with um, you. Much every... like you were talking about, you know, you built that first one, you couldn't get it to print, so you chunked it off to the side. You know, I think that it's I, not I... even that. Yeah. It's everybody is a, just a whiny jerk now. <laughs> And has well, no Joe, interest Joe, in <laughs> developing. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna back him up on that because like it yeah. seriously does seem like everybody because we're we're both in the 3D printing community on Facebook and it seriously it seems like nobody is actually willing to fix their own dang issues. Like yeah. they all yeah. want people to fix it for themselves. They don't want to actually work on it. They don't want to actually fix it. They want it to just work out of the box and just do it. And because they're going in on such cheap, low printers, they're getting this horrible experience. It's like, well, you okay. got yourself into this mess. Like, okay, there yeah. is good printers yeah. out there. You could have invested a little bit more and got a great printer if you yeah. were actually willing to build it yourself. But you decided to go down this road. And now you're, like, basically trying to drag everybody else's opinion down yeah. with you. Yeah. Well, and, and Joe, and talking and about the social media, man, you know our G Plus group has, like, shrank yeah. to – Nothing well, the now, entire G know. plus is going to shrink real soon. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's a shame too, man. That's where the coolest freaking people were. Yep, it, it it's sad too because like the the Google Plus 3D printing group, which is you know where a lot of the RepRap guys mm -hmm. went when RepRap form started to kind of die. The, everybody for a few weeks was just kind of scrambling, and they just kind of were like, well. If I have to go to Facebook, I'm just not going to communicate mm -hmm. with you guys anymore. I'm out. <laughs> you know, and that's it, one of my good for them. <laughs> one of my favorite guys, Joe, is Eric Lean, and uh, yeah. he's that way. He said, "You know, when this is done, I'm <laughs> look for me, but I won't be on Facebook." 
And, I love uh, Eric. He's yeah, such a wonderful he's guy. So freaking awesome. There's a guy you guys should get on, man. He, he I tried. He is, he he's really? just so busy. He is so busy. <laughs> he is a busy guy, man. He has such a wealth of knowledge. And what a cool freaking cat, man. I can't wait. I want to release his um he released it the other day, but I want to clean it up a little bit and make it like a CNC router project. Um but he built his kids one of the little desktop arcades. And yeah, so he, uh, he, cool. he got all those files over to me the other day and he released them on Google Plus too. I want to clean that project up. I mean, his models are that's where Eric and I have always done so great with uh is that he models in SolidWorks and I model in SolidWorks, and we both learned about the same time. Uh, he does not. It, sleep. His models are so immaculate. Oh, he they, doesn't they, sleep either. They are... So he excelled way past me because uh, <laughs> I've got to go to bed because I'll turn into a pumpkin elsewise. Um, he is like gold standard oh, of his, modelers. His and... models are so beautiful. I completely agree with you. Like somebody the other day on something was like, hey, I need a dust boot. Uh, and one guy was like, here's a link to one. And I was like, oh, it's a dust boot for one of my products. Let me see who made that, you know? And I flipped over on the page and Joe, I didn't even have to scroll down. I just looked at the model. I was like, oh, that's Eric's. And sure enough, I, lo- I scrolled down. I was <laughs> yeah. like, yep, there's Eric. That's yep. awesome. Yeah. So do you feel that 3D printing is dead? Man. Because Brooke gave a talk where yeah. he opened up the talk with, uh, and this was at the East Coast Rep Rap Fest. He's, he opened the talk with, uh, Rep Rap is dead. Yeah. And everyone was just like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, but he, he gave some solid arguments. And uh, I... I'm afraid, man. I'm afraid it kind of is, you know, and I think you guys have hit on some pretty good points about, you know, a cheapening experience uh, right out of the hole. Um, but then, you know, uh, a few of us on G- Google Plus had, you know, kind of went into this topic. In fact, I've got a blog post on it, um, but it's it's a lack of materials anymore. Where do we go once you get out of Tallman's filament? You yeah. know, I'm not even going to go to any any of the other stuff. Uh, but after you've gone through engineered plastics, where do you go after that? Um, well, in, Sanjay... I'm, I'm excited for what E3D is doing. Because oh, yeah? they've got the, the tool changer coming, which has some really unique possibilities. But they just dropped all their high temp stuff, like the Mordor beds. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. um, what I'm really excited about, though, is the uh, PAEK that they're developing, um, which is essentially peak that you can print in open air. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Which which is a game changer. Like all of a sudden, you have hugely high temp glass tr- transition uh, printable materials that like it can just live in a boiling water environment or a caustic yeah. chemical environment and it'll be fine. Yeah, absolutely. And, absolutely. I think though, the man that you probably print different things than the average person would, you know what true. I mean? You know what I mean? True. That's I've seen Sanjay from the beginning come out with the, with the V six, actually the V God, what was it? Three or something. Four. The first time I saw, a, yeah, Either way, I've seen him do that, and then he ran his business model through to the V6, and then the Chimera and the Cyclops I thought were really exciting, but the market never loved them. Um, And then he came out with that printer and just couldn't handle the manufacturing, although everybody loved that. Um, These nozzles he's got now and, and... the high temp beds and stuff like that. I just wonder how, I wonder how good of an application that is for the common printing person. Oh, they'll uh, straight up tell you they're not. <laughs> hey. Well, that's, that's my worry. That's my worry about 3d printing, man, is that I, I just, I don't know where the interest is gone. So to the question, do I think it's dead? I don't want to absolutely say it is, but I'll tell you from my business standpoint, which I am just a reseller, 
uh, but I am a reseller of the most awesome 3D printing stuff there is that I see will actually sell, um, and even a lot of stuff that people won't buy. Um, <laughs> it's a joke, but it's not funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've got lots of inventory. I'm just going to have a garage sale, and there's going to be like an old lady walking out in front of the place, like looking at a Cyclops, <laughs> like, what is this? I was like, I don't know. 25 cents. <laughs> Here, it, please. please. It's, the, it's the old revision. Nobody wants that. Um, I'll come to Texas. There I'll shop at your garage sale. There you go, Add Joe. It. I'd appreciate it, brother. <laughs> Add um, it to my museum. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's awesome. But, uh, you know, I just, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's dead. I don't want to say it is, but from my, my sales point, uh, it's, it's deeply declined this year. Steeply declined this year. Good. Well, is it just 3D printing, though? Because That's a good it... question. Um, I did my rebranding in the middle of this year. So for me to reduce all my data, I do have... I do have some point there to where I got to say, okay, was that the rebranding or was that the market? And so I'm, I'm, I'll tell you the routers have just continued. Um, they just, they normally always do though, but the guy that finds me, I, I don't advertise. I don't really talk to anybody about them. Um, hell, I don't even carry a business card around with me. Like worst CEO you've ever met in your life. <laughs> um, people like ask me what I do and I'm like oh hang out and it's probably like a guy that's on his phone looking at CNC routers and I was like oh what you doing um, yeah but the guy that finds me is exactly looking for what I have uh, again he's he's above one price point he's below another one uh, and he's looking for an exact thing to do those just keep going so they have slowed uh this year to answer that question directly joe but i don't know if it may have been my rebranding right in the middle of the year well i know i know like make has seen a, a significant reduction in attendance for maker fairs over the last mm -hmm. two years compared mm -hmm. to the the other ones like it's really funny because I, I haven't done the last two years <laughs> it's all because of you you're God. part of the problem. I am. I am. <laughs> you I'm are the problem, child. Brandon. I'm a problem. <laughs> but, um, I you know I I I wonder if we're in the the like decrease of the hype phase. Mm -hmm. You know, like every every marketing chart has like the, yep. the the beginning and then the like super sharp spike, Absolutely. and then the level off, which I think was the last two years. I agree. And you know you know now we're on the the subtle decline for the maker world. Yeah, and um, we're gonna like start to see a little bit of attrition in the businesses, and people start to refine their products. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I think we're still gonna see some really amazing stuff come out, but it's not I going to be the do, whirlwind. Man. I hope but we do. I see. I hope we see some real innovation here real soon, because you know, typically when a market ends, there's something that fills its hole. Yeah, nothing's gonna fill 3D printing. There's nothing like it. Yeah, you got ceramic and you can vacuum form now at home and a couple other things, but there is no other 3D printer. A 3D printer is a 3D printer. It's just all there is to it. Uh, FDM tried, and I don't know if you've ever owned one of those, but they're awesome at making chess pieces, but that's about <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. So I don't yeah. know what's going to fill its hole, man, unless people just stop making. Which I really hope isn't the case yeah it'll make me yeah. very sad yeah but i i i'm hoping that more more people are moving to the the more physical making like cnc work like metalworking yeah. and mills and um you know yeah. they're, they've got the confidence from the printers now that they can go out and create absolutely. with other tools now absolutely but i don't know As a, we'll see yeah. Dang, you did run over an hour, Joe. Uh, and gun, you know, dude. with I that, told wife, I was like, I'll be back. I was like, I'll be back in forty-five minutes for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you get into it, you start getting all passionate, and everybody starts talking over each other. It's like, oh, all right, now we're just going even longer. <laughs> yep. Funny. So, do you guys have anything for him? 
no it's it, like it's been awesome i i would love to just sit down and have a beer with you sometime if i'm ever at a the the same rep rap or something like that because just would love to bounce even more stuff off but i can't think of anything right now <laughs> absolutely, absolutely I a, brother I you gonna be at merch question. this year i don't know man i don't know um i don't know i think it's gonna be really good there's all kinds of conf- controversy around it. And like, I think I'll uh, I think I'll go stay at the hotel and have a giant pizza with the manager up there. Uh, <laughs> That's what you did two years ago. Don't do that again. <laughs> and then just get on the plane and be like, I did it. Wait, no, I need to go get my free T-shirt. That was about it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just what were you going to say, Aaron? Sorry. Oh, I was going to ask him uh, what kind of plans he has in the future for Hobby Fab. Like Man, you. that is that is such an open ended question, Aaron. I'll be honest with you. Um, I just don't know, brother. To be honest with you, as you know, as we've been discussing the the market downturn, and I'm I'm sitting on about four new products right now. Um, but of course, it costs capital to launch the products. Um, and, you know, if I sit around here and I produce 10 of each one of them and sink $15,000 into that and nobody buys anything, um, that'll be my downturn. You know, I don't want to say that we work on such a small you know, capital, but let's face it, it's an open source hardware business, man. And yeah, there's just not a huge amount of capital in it anyways, you know, so. I don't really know, Aaron, to be honest with you. I I'm not really sure, man. Um, I'll probably yeah, go ahead and release a few more products here uh, and and hope that maybe we see a turn here pretty soon. Uh, see interest repeat and not just see companies throwing out bolt together stuff to, you know, fill some kind of extra market hole that's not there. Um, yeah. But it may also turn around and be the opposite. You know, it may be that a lot of other companies restructure and reshape and go away, and a few that are left can actually survive and continue to do well. I don't know, man. I'm not sure. I'll hang on until my my fingernails are bleeding, but <laughs> it's about as far as I'll go. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, thanks. Well, yeah, we appreciate that. Absolutely, you know, man. we we like people who are super passionate about our industry and uh you know want to give us as much as they can and i i definitely think you have well i appreciate that man i appreciate that and yeah uh absolutely though man we'll grab a beer next time i i make it up there uh i, I may end up in peoria anyways you know i gotta hang out with joe too so and yeah if, I gotta love that, yeah. that handlebar mustache, you know. <laughs> <laughs> come see the makerspace. Come Absolutely. hang out. Absolutely. We'll, we'll take you on tours of some crazy factories. Sweet. You know, Sweet. we we got we've got fun stuff here, and we've got access to fun stuff. And you guys it's not are quite. Some, you guys are Texas, some of my but... awesome customers too. Like I love seeing Peoria. You know, wake up and start doing the order fulfillment, and I love to see the Peoria <laughs> people. I'm like. Yeah, it's one of those guys <laughs> over there. Like nowhere else in the world in Peoria would just like be randomly searching the internet and hit my place. As I said, I don't I don't like advertise or anything. So I'm like, thank you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you noticed. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I do. I send a lot of people your way because you do you know, your products are good. I appreciate it's... that. A lot of them aren't my products, man. I just you know, the products that are well, like, mine i just ship really fast and try to keep a normal price on them without gouging and you know yeah yeah well like the r7 is a solid machine Thank um you. your all-in-one controller kits are are just mm-hmm. rad like i, can't, I, I hate girl i still the, can't keep those the, in in stock man bowels of my being uh-huh. but the the uh controller kit thing that you sent me works so it's pretty good. cool yeah it's pretty cool man so good like i i called aaron after i got a machine running with it and i was like i think i'm gonna have to eat words <laughs> i was very excited for that call <laughs> that's awesome man you know that's yeah. marlin is what made me fall in love with gerbil man 
You know, once you get used to flipping through 700 pages to make one little setting change, <laughs> you're just like, you feel natural about it, you know? Yeah. Opening, up a, opening up a single text file. <laughs> Who wants to do that? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, Smoothie CNC has never done it for me. I'm really, yeah. the duet guys are really diving hard into CNC and lasers right now. And I'm yeah. really curious to see what they're going to do. Because I don't know if you've played with the duet controller yet, I, but they're uh, incredible. Me, I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I hit them up after playing with the customer's unit. Um, and I said, hey, you know, I'd like to check your product out and resell it. Um, and I explained to them, I don't, I don't sell anything I don't use. And so they came back and they're like, Oh, well, what, what are you going to put it in? And I'm like, well, I'm not putting it in anything right now. I'm going to resell it and play with it. I'm like, well, come back when you want to put it in one of your machines. And I was like, yeah, ah, thanks. Appreciate you. <laughs> but no, I, I had one. I played <laughs> with it. I think it's, I think it's awesome. I really do. I think it's a great controller. Um, all the add-ons that they got are super cool and useful. Um, yeah. But, you know, man, I'll be honest with you. If you can't, you know, we were talking about tool changes with 3D printers here just a few minutes ago. That is a century-old technology. We've been doing that on CNC machines for ever, you know. It's, yeah. It's, it's, and you can do that with a gerbil board. You can do anything in my opinion, I'd like to I'd, I'd accept a challenge if somebody wants to give me one to do, you know, that uh, uh, outside of like special G codes made for like $80 billion yeah. machines, uh, I can do it with a gerbil. So, yeah, it, and the uh, the Inventables guys totally prove mm -hmm. that they've got mm -hmm. an X carve that does tool changes. It's absolutely it's all in your spindle. It so, is. It I, is. actually, you know, we'll, you, you know, it's all in the software, man. Uh, the G code sender actually is what does your tool changes. Uh, yeah, but you, you got to have a spindle capable of it. Like, oh, why don't you oh, have a spindle you're capable talking about doing it. an ATC, an automatic tool oh, change. Oh, yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. No, and okay. that's fine. Yes, that's easy you're right. to do, too. Yeah, that's yeah, easy. Your to G code too. sender. Yep, yeah. That, 100% uh, that's all in the right. G, code, G code sender. Yeah, that's easy stuff there, man. I'd love to do that. I just, we looked into it, a group of us, uh, R7 owners, and it was like $1,800 or something to set the whole thing up. And I was like, I'll be honest, guys, I'll just change my tool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I think you, you guys are that, awesome and but... cool, but. <laughs> I've got a uh, commercial router at work now, yeah, and it's got an ATC on it, and Is I don't ever right? want to change a router tool again. Is that it's right? That's so awesome. Oh, awesome. That is cool. That is cool. No, I've played with them, but I'm like, eh, for 1800 bucks, eh, no, I'll, I'll just change my own tool. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I'm doing full touch off and everything like that, and like one set of R7 plates takes three tool changes. Well, it's a CNC, so I'll put the first tool in, I'll do my auto level, and then like maybe go to sleep or go get a beer or go work on a truck or go fill an order or go yell at somebody, and then I'll come back. <laughs> the machine's like been sitting there for two days, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I should change that tool. And I'll change that tool, and it'll, it'll do the next operation. And like three days later, I'm like, oh, yeah, I should change that tool. <laughs> <laughs> But that's because you've got your feeds and speeds dialed. Like, yeah, I run the same that's, thing all the time. Yeah, so it's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're running Absolutely. production. Yeah. yeah, same tooling, dialed feeds and speeds. You can totally do that. That makes yeah. perfect sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. but like me, I never run the same part twice because I hate production. Yeah, so yeah. much. It pays well though. It does. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> I, I burn out in about thir like I run the second set of parts and I'm like, all right, well, I'm this done with this shit. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is not fun. That was anymore. fun. Yeah. That's yeah. cool, man. No, um, but like you're totally right though. The G code center makes all the difference because the, the one I was running just, just frustrated the, the, the living crap out of me. And then you're running an open source G code center called mm -hmm. DCNC. 
I and love BCNC, man. And it's so good. It's got like the worst interface on the planet. Yes. <laughs> it's so ugly. It is real bad. I hope the developers are listening to this because I love it so much. But God, it's ugly. So See, I looked you know, into their GitHub and they're they're it's on the roadmap to improve yeah, the UI. Yeah. It's just so coupled to the the Python framework they're using. Yep. They're trying to yeah. decouple it so they can now abstract the UI from the actual functionality. Yeah. yeah. When when See, Linux I'm CNC it, is guys. I love printer. that. I love that freaking <laughs> block like dot giant home button. It's like four colors but in squares. I I love that eight bit look about everything. <laughs> <laughs> See, I love Linux CNC. Linux CNC yeah. has a special place in my heart. It got me into Linux. Yeah. It got me my first machine running. But it's ugly too. And, you know, when your when your interface is uglier than Linux CNC, we should talk. <laughs> That's true. You know, I don't think Mock's very pretty either. In oh fact, God, really? I don't think but, any of them are pretty. You know, the Tor Mock software is kind of pretty. Yes. Pathpilot's gorgeous. Uh, yeah, but I can't have you used Pathpilot? Pretty... Oh wait, oh, yeah, yeah, you I've have. Got a Tormach. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love that thing. I beat. That are you thing running Pathpilot too? Oh god, Joe, or I don't are you... know. I I turn it on and push buttons, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you, uh... you know, I think it is Pathpilot too. Okay, it's not yeah, the old. I, there's a bunch of cool branch. stuff about Pathpilot too, and. Um... My coworker refuses to let me update our controller. He's like, it works. Oh. Leave it alone. And I'm like, you're such an old person. <laughs> He's like six he days older than it. me. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, no, I've got the rotary tool for it. And um, yeah, I've also got that. Uh, I've never even used it. The uh, plastic injecting. I, cause I set up all the software to do it, but I just like, I'll do that one day. So it's like yeah. still sitting in the box that it came in from Tormach with like an inch and a half worth of dust on top of it. It's a good place for it. We've yeah. got a we've got the fourth axis set up, and we're working on a tombstone set up and a whole bunch Sweet. of stuff Sweet. to run production fourth axis parts. But it's, awesome. it's a fun machine, and it Linux is. CNC powers Pathpilot, mm -hmm. so that makes it great in yeah. my opinion. Absolutely. So, well, all right. All right. Guys. Well, you to need to go to bed, man. I do. Like you've kept me up later than oh, I can't remember how the last time I was up this late. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy well, um, you guys have anything else? Real no, quick? I'm good. Thank All you right. for coming on, man. Thank you. No, I <laughs> yeah, it's been a blast. You guys. Yeah, thank you. I wish I would have had my video working, man. I just. I don't know. I got a little tired, and I was like, I'm not even going to ah. mess with this. <laughs> it's, but, not, uh, it's no big deal. We'll uh, release the audio. It'll be excellent. And, um, yeah, we had an absolute blast. I deeply appreciate you coming on. I know it's. we've been talking about this for months, so I'm I'm glad absolutely. to finally get it. Get, no, get I appreciate on. the opportunity, Joe. And great it, to talk with you other guys as well, man. Yeah, Anytime you want to come on and uh plug new stuff you want to do or like bounce ideas off of us and just you know hang out Heck for yeah. an hour let us know Heck yeah absolutely man so sounds we're... good brother cool well with that this is joe and aaron and christian and brandon <laughs> <laughs> keep making stuff absolutely all right see you guys <laughs>